What terrifying confession has someone told you while drunk? A coworker told me she went all angel of mercy and smothered her elderly, dementia-ridden, grandmother while she was sleeping. The next Monday in the office was definitely a weird one after that particular happy hour confession. Someone replied, my granny always tells us to push her out onto an ice floe when she can't think for herself anymore, which is slightly disturbing but fine, until she semi-ironically talks about going into, her friends, dementia home and machine gunning all the old people. It was me who did the confessing. When I was 18 I was sexually assaulted on a bridge in the middle of the night when I was all alone. My mum works in hearing, and she had always told me to bite someone if I got into trouble. So I did, I bit into his neck until my teeth met again. He fell down then I ran all the way home. A few weeks later I read in the news that a serial assaulter had gone to the hospital with neck wounds and later died. They'd drawn it down to him attacking someone and them acting in self-defense. I never told anyone until I got really drunk with my boyfriend last year and spilled it. He couldn't believe I'd kept that secret. I worked in a hospital and an alcoholic guy I knew from around my town came in. Of course he was very drunk so he got a bed, he was homeless at this point. Just as he was starting to settle he screamed I slit his ducking throat. Dot. So I went up to him and asked him to settle and he started telling me that he did it while in the army and could never forgive himself for it. Cried himself to sleep and died in the local park a few months later. Just goes to show how little our country supports veterans who gave up their mental health to defend it. A friend of mine died from a drug overdose. After the funeral a mutual friend of ours and I were getting drunk when he broke down crying. He asked me if I remembered the time when he and our dead friend told me about an accident that they'd witnessed where they saw a truck driver die. I told him I did. He then told me the most ducked up shit. He said that our friend ran up to the dying man and stole his wedding ring, and that the man couldn't do anything but look up, terrified, at our friend as he was being robbed. I knew they were bad into drugs but I never thought they could do anything like that. I grew up with them, they were like my brothers. I don't really trust anyone completely anymore. My mom was in another state for business, a company flew her crew out to Texas to discuss a change in software and offered their company, and so it was just my dad taking care of me. I was about 10 and he came to tuck me in one night, but he is incredibly hammered. He opened the door to my bedroom. Told me I was a mistake that saved them from getting divorced and goodnight. Worst part is he didn't close the door completely when he left. Had a buddy tell me his friend drunkenly confessed to him that he had killed his stepdad and made it look like a suicide. His stepdad had been abusive towards him and his mom for years and it finally broke when he made it look like his stepfather had hung himself in their garage. I don't know who the friend was, I was never given a name or much else of the story. At a family gathering my grandma got tipsy and started to tell stories from her childhood. While she does this every time, no matter tipsy or sober, guess it's just a normal grandma thing, this time it took a dark turn. She told us a story that is the reason she hates to go to the dentist and particularly hates the drilling part. She told us a story about when she was 6 years old. During World War II my family lived in Hamburg, Germany right next to the harbor. During a particular week in 1943 the city was continuously bombed and over 35.000 people died and more than a 100.000 people were injured. The houses that were hit, mostly burned down creating a huge fire, with such force that I sucked not only oxygen in, creating strong winds, but also people. The fire created such heat, that people running out of their burning houses got stuck in the molten asphalt on the streets and burned to death. As it was all happening around her. That particular smell was present for over a week in her part of the city. Drilling in your tooth, creates exactly that smell. My grandma had to stop the dentist, as she recognized the smell immediately. This story shook us to the core, as it came out of the blue. It still sends chills down my spine. Ooh. After a work party the wife of a colleague and me ended up being the last two people standing. We were both fairly drunk when she started telling me about how she was sexually assaulted by a priest when she was a kid. The church covered it all up and the bastard never faced any charges. When I was 14 my mom took me and my sisters and a couple of our friends to the beach. My sister, 15, and I got our own room with our two friends and wound up meeting some boys and getting drunk. My sister's friend, 15F, 
was really drunk and got super upset and confessed that her stepfather had been sexually molesting her for years. Really 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 horrible stuff. It sobered everyone up fast. We rallied around her, told her we were there for her, yada yada, but when we got home from the beach trip a few days later I knew I needed to tell my mom. After I told my mom she got the state police involved, there was a trial, and the man wound up sentenced to 8 years in prison. It turned out he was doing it to the younger sister as well. One of my best friends since middle school opened up to me the day we had our last day of high school. We had been partying all day, got off at 10 a.m., but most people left at around 3 p.m. to go get ready for the seniors' dinner and after party and whatnot. My friend stayed behind with our class president. I told him I'd pick him up for the dinner and left. When I got back, both were falling down drunk and in tears. A few years earlier, our class prey had lost his father. I take my buddy back to his house so he can get changed for the dinner and on the way he tells me what happened. They had kept drinking when everyone left and eventually got to the topic of their dads. I had never met my friend's dad, he died and that was all I knew. I never knew how he died. It turns out my buddy's dad was a lawyer or something in the country he's from and was being extorted by a gang. When money started to run out, my buddy's dad sent the family to another country and told them he'd meet them there, that he had to finish some things up. A few weeks after moving they learned that he had been murdered by the gang. It completely ducked my friend up. We always used to drink heavily and whatever since we were in high school. For me it was just drinking, for my buddy it was numbing the pain. It was shocking when he told me this, and really made me understand him a lot more, why he acted the way he acted. Shared an off-campus apartment with a very cool older guy in college. He was a nurse. Got up super early every morning to do his shifts. Every night you could find him at his regular Irish pub. They let me drink there without ID because they knew I was with him. Basically a super high-functioning alcoholic. One day I came home after finishing my exams. He brings out a bottle of Jameson to celebrate. It was about two-thirds full. After a few shots he starts telling me about his time in Vietnam. I'd known him for two years and he had never brought it up, and I had never asked. I knew he was a vet but assumed he had been a nurse. Nope. Special forces, I'm not military and I'm sure I got some of the actual military stuff wrong, as you shall come to understand. His demeanor totally changed after a few drinks. He started telling me about having to go on covert operations to carry out assassinations of civilians. Said he dreams of the faces of all the people he killed. We ended up polishing off the entire bottle. He got up the next morning at 5 a.m. and went off to work. I spent the entire day moaning in bed and praying to the porcelain god. We never spoke about it again. I had someone tell me that he molested his daughter when she was an infant because he was angry and thought that his girlfriend had cheated on him and that she wasn't his biological daughter. He went on to say DNA testing was done and it was determined that she was actually his daughter and that he felt very guilty about the whole thing. His daughter was 7 to 8 at the time he told me this. I literally spent a night tossing and turning thinking about it and finally decided I had to report him. I had a boyfriend who never talked about his past ever. He talked so fondly of his old state but just about the actual state never about people. If you try to prod further he would just say oh well it doesn't matter anymore. We were young, I was about 19 and he was probably like 23 or so. He drank a shit ton all the time and whatever we were young so I just thought that it was normal and all in good fun. One night while shit-faced he started talking about how much he loved going into the woods and how he and his friends enjoyed playing on the rivers and streams in his old state. Then he got very sad and started to babble a bit incoherently. I heard him say something along the lines of his friend came to his house on meth and they were all also on drugs. Then more incoherently babble than something about his friend getting shot in the face. Then more incoherent babbling than something about that is why he can never go home again. He was so desperately sad and missed his home very much. You could tell every time the topic came up. So yeah I am pretty sure he accidentally, or on purpose, killed a guy and was on the run. I have dot my money on accident because he seemed so distraught but you never know. Also, you barely know anyone or anything at 19 years old. I often wonder if he ever had to face those demons. My mother's first husband, the sperm donor. I was 16. She had just walked out that same day and he got extremely drunk and told me that I was never supposed to have been born and that I should have died with my brother. I asked him what he meant by my brother since I had no siblings and he confessed to beating the shit out of my mother when she was pregnant and she ended up in the hospital. 
I was born but my twin brother died in the womb. At the time my mother's English, she's Polish, was not good, so he claimed to doctors that she just fell down the stairs and threatened to have her deported and used me as blackmail if she ever told anyone. I followed her soon after once she had contacted me that she'd found a place to stay. I asked her if she had anything to tell me regarding my birth and she told me the same story. I guess that explains why I felt like I was missing a part of myself all my life. Felt when he was 11, my dad was abducted and assaulted by three men. He was so terrified that he never told his parents. After my grandpa passed away, my dad finally told my grandma what happened. She told him that they already knew. One of my dad's siblings knew and had told grandpa. She just said that he had taken care of it. A few years later, a developer bought my grandparents' farm and turned it into a development. During excavation they found three male skeletons buried in a single grave. I guess grandpa really did take care of it. Rangers really do lead the way. My mother once told me a story while drunk. She had a pregnancy before me, but her boyfriend wasn't ready for a kid, so he kicked her in the stomach until she was no longer pregnant. So for revenge she had her friend who was a prostitute seduce him, take him to a hotel room, and tied him up. My mom then described how she took a baseball bat and broke every bone she could of his, described how she had to throw water on him to keep him awake. She was never tried for it so I'm assuming he lived. I had heard the kicked in the stomach till miscarriage part before, the whole bat thing was a new detail, she hasn't mentioned it since. I was having dinner with a group of friends and one girl was talking about how at a party she helped a drunk guy friend get onto a bed and then she got him naked and started riding him. She said he woke up halfway through but was receptive, was very happy and completely okay with it because he found her hot, and after they were done he joked to her that he would have punched her face in and called the cops if he didn't find her attractive. I honestly wasn't sure how I was supposed to react to that story, because what she did was technically assault, but then if her victim genuinely didn't mind. So yeah. I don't know. Granted she was talking to a group of friends including me so I didn't really have to give her a reaction.